Eugene, I'd like to know whether God exists. And many people tell me the only way I can know is by religious experience. I've never had a religious experience, and I'm not sure that I want one. I look to analytic techniques, the philosophy of religion. And I ask you, as a philosopher of religion, can you really make progress in understanding what God is and does God exist? I'm just like you. I have never had any religious experience at all. And the reason why I do philosophy of religion is precisely because I want to know whether or not God exists. I want to know what's the uh, origin of the universe. And I want to explore these big questions. And that's why I do philosophy of religion. And I believe that philosophy of religion is very helpful. I learned a lot about, about God, the existence of God, and the nature of God by doing philosophy. Help me understand specifically how this can work. So um, scientists, they are interested in what is true in this world. So they're interested in what is true given the laws of nature in this world. They are not really interested in uh, other possible worlds or you know, what could have been true and so on. Uh, but philosophers are interested in something more fundamental or more basic. So they are interested in possibility, actuality, and necessity, and so on. And these ideas are closely related to uh, the concept of God, because God is meant to be the greatest possible being. So there's a modal element in this definition. And here, philosophy is very helpful because it tells you what science, science doesn't tell you. So how, how can you make progress? The modal meaning, whether things are contingent or, or necessary, mm -hmm. and how does that help us to understand first what God may be, and then whether or not that God really exists? Mm. First, if you don't have any religious experience, you have to start with the concept of God. You have to analyze the concept of God and define exactly what God is. I mean, you don't have direct experience of God, so you have to do conceptual analysis. And here, philosophy uh, is very helpful. So we define God, which is uh, acceptable uh, to most theists, and then see what kind of attributes we can derive from this definition. So what are some definitions of God and what are some of these attributes? And so one uh, very common definition is that God is the greatest possible being, or God is the perfect being. And from this definition, many theists derive further attributes like omniscience, omnipotence, moral perfection, timelessness, changelessness, incorporeality, simplicity, and so on, many attributes. And those other characteristics are, the way you describe it, secondary. Mm. They're not primary. That's right. So nice thing about this definition, God as the greatest possible being, is that this definition subsumes all individual attributes that God has. And you're not necessarily certain whether those other attributes apply. You may have to test yeah, them. Yeah, here philosophers have to run different arguments to find out which attributes should be uh, ascribed to God. Yeah, and you have very, some very obvious ones, like God is all-powerful, omnipotent, all-knowing, know omniscient, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, present everywhere, omnipresent, uh, morally perfect. But you also have some strange ones, like God can't change, or mm. God is simple. And is These are complicating arguments, and, and the way you would have to get into that is through very technical analysis. Though. That's right. Yeah. So when you have, I have again, I have never had a, any religious experience, but I think if I have it, probably I would realize that God is some great being, supernatural being, and uh, overwhelmingly great being. But and you uh, feel one with that God. Yeah. But I don't feel that because <laughs> I've never had that. <laughs> But even if you have this kind of experience, you would still you still wouldn't know exactly what kind of properties God God has. So we yeah. cannot really talk about God uh, clearly and precisely. Not only that, but if I had that experience, at least the way I feel now, without having had it, uh, I wouldn't trust it. Hmm. Maybe I had bad coffee or something. I don't, I, right. I don't know what would have caused it. So once we've defined God, let's go to the next step. And, and how can we determine whether that God exists not just as a potential or something nice or something to hope for, but in reality? Mm. There, you have to um, develop an argument for the existence of God. So the clearest example is the, the ontological argument, because the ontological argument starts with the definition of God as the greatest possible being. And this argument says that by accepting this definition, 
uh, you can derive the existence of God. Now, this is very controversial. Most people mm -hmm. say it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of a trick of words. You, if you assume such a God exists and then allow that God to exist in one possible world, then it has mm -hmm. to be in all worlds. And, you know, I, I, I know that argument that it's kind of cute. Um, you know, but I, I certainly wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, bet that God exists based on mm -hmm. that kind of argument. I'd like to look at a lot of diverse arguments, mm -hmm. some of which may work or not work, but that's why philosophy of religion is is important. Mm. Schopenhauer famously said that the ontological argument is a charming joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's more than a joke, and right. I take it very seriously. And I'm one of very few philosophers who endorse the ontological argument, and I hold theism on the basis of the ontological argument. And the more traditional arguments of the design of the world or the... Uh, the cosmological argument in terms of uh, each cause having a previous cause and you have to have God as the, as the primal cause, uh, those arguments you think are less strong? Some of them might succeed, but they make a lot of very contentious metaphysical or moral assumptions. So I'm not, I'm not entirely endorsing these arguments, but I think that the ontological argument is very promising. So looking at philosophy of religion in general, how, how do you see its importance not just as an academic discipline, but as really determining for everyone what God is and does that God exist. Mm. So philosophers tend to focus on very subtle issues. They like subtle technical details, and they forget about these big questions, the existence of God, the origin of the universe, and the meaning of life, and so on. I love philosophy of religion because there we talk about, we directly address these uh, big questions.